Hello and welcome to AC TV. I'm Sara Haney, and you're watching AC News Bulletin. To today's news include the Quidditch Cup event in AC, the Illuminae Fun Day, Loves and Theatrical Play, Breast Cancer Awareness Booth, AC Expo event, and Bridgestone Booth in AC. Last week, the Student Union organized the Quidditch event in the AC Gardens. It's a fun international sport and it's inspired by Harry Potter. The event took place behind the library, where it's the heart of the campus and the location where many students usually meet together. The new sport has students hooked and willing to try out a couple of matches during their free time. Yusuf Ahmed, Operations Director at SU Events, is participating today and spectating the game. This event is made by SU Events. It's under the Events and Employment Committee. Uh, this event is called Quidditch. It's basically a game from Harry Potter, uh, and uh, it's the first time to be done in Egypt. It's an international sport that's done by uh, international universities and uh, international sports and clubs. And for the first time, we bring it uh, today in Egypt, and the first time on the uh, EC campus, where uh, it's basically the same uh, game as uh, in the movie Harry Potter, but we're doing the real life. The Quidditch event lasted for a week and it offered the chance for students to play a sport and to make the Harry Potter game come to life. On Monday, October 21, the Illumini Office of the American University in Cairo organized a fun day in the gardens at 1 p.m. The event motto is for one last time, bring out your inner child, and it was directed towards the graduating seniors. The office brought, brought four different inflatable games while distributing some ice cream from Nestle, refreshing drinks from Red Bull, and playing music. The event was partially organized by undergraduate students who are currently working in the alumni office through the work-study program they offer. worked so hard for this event. Uh, I'm glad for the traffic we had today. AC Tahrir Square hosted the translated play Love's End by the French director Pascal Rambert. The play was performed on Al Falaki Theatre from Wednesday, October 9 till Sunday, October 13, from 8 p.m. until 9.30 p.m. At least 70 people attended the play, among them AC students, non acians and Egyptian actors such as Amr Abid. The play was translated from French to Arabic and was written in Daira and directed by Pascal Rambert, where Love's End was performed by the Egyptian actor Mohammed Haitim and Linda Mohammed. The performance revolves around two lovers facing each other, two visions, two bodies, and two internal monologues about how their love ends. Something out new. I haven't seen anything like this before where it's usually just two actors and they're on a monologue and because even though they were doing a monologue I think it wasn't boring, it was actually quite interesting and you can see their expressions, their emotions through the monologue and how it was transitioning, uh, the character was transitioning as you go um, and even though it was a translated uh, script, uh, I didn't feel it was translated at all. In addition, the play won the French Drama Critics Association Awards and was part of the Downtown Contemporary Arts Festival. The Falaki Theatre will host next week the play Pierce Show Under the Rain. Last Thursday, Hand in Hand, an AEC charity organization, hosted an event during Assembly Hour to commence its month-long awareness campaign on breast cancer. Hand in Hand collaborated with hairdressers from Tom Beauty Salon to get the hair of volunteer students for donations to breast cancer hospitals, such as Bahia, for wig making purposes. The month of October is known for worldwide to be dedicated for breast cancer awareness and Hand in Hand were no strangers to the cause as they distributed pink ribbons and symptoms flyers to spread awareness among female students on campus. The event got the attention of many female students who stood in line waiting for their turn to donate their hair for the cause, including Mayor, a business major student who was very enthusiastic to get the first haircut, after which initiating the event for more donations. Because, uh, because my hair is going to go back anyways, but uh, people who have cancer wouldn't have hair whatsoever. <laughs> so this is going to help them yani, feel more confident. After seeing Mayor's haircut, Many female students stood in line to donate their hair for the cause, which got others around them to cheer them up with encouragement for their contributions for the cause. The president of Hand in Hand was pleased with the event's outcome and said that many more events will follow till the end of the month in support of the cause and to create more awareness. 
On Wednesday, October 16, the AC Venture Lab held the Expo event, which gives the chance to different startups to show their products and offer their services. The event lasted for two days and the startups booths were available throughout the whole day to engage the AC community with various activities while testing their ideas. The ideas proposed during the event were of different industries including healthcare, fashion, e-commerce and many more. Entrepreneurs were given the chance to closely interact with potential customers and listen to their feedback. To encourage members of AC to take part in the event, some entrepreneurs distributed discount cards to people who pass by their booth and leave their contact information. الاكسبو ده يساعدنا ان احنا نحط البروتوتايبس بتاعتنا والناس بتجربها وتدلنا a lot of feedback they love they make sure ان في a lot of traffic وان في مسابقات وحاجات بتجيب ناس وبيهتموا ان هم يسمعوا كل حاجة ويدونا feedback وعمل product فناخد a lot of insight that is deeper than اي survey ممكن يتعمل as they were passing by different startups and listening to new business ideas, some members of the AC community stopped by Cold Stone Court to enjoy a quick dessert. Towards the end of the day, the AC Venture Lab booth provided tips and tricks on how to take part in the upcoming acceleration cycle as a way to encourage future entrepreneurs. For, th for the love of the famous actor Izzat Abouf, CSTA Club decided to organize a memorial night in which they invited his family, some of his friends, and AC students. The memorial night took place at Basili Auditorium Hall on Sunday, October 13 and 7 p.m. Many AC students attended the event that was hosted by the actress Shireen Rida. Many celebrities like Hussein Fahmi, Layla Ailwi, Tamir Husni, and others also attended the event to narrate their memories with Aizza Tabaouf. The club, also, the club also allowed Aizat Abu'auf fans to offer some gifts to his family like paintings, poems and songs. Aizat Abu'auf's sisters, daughter and son at the end of the event were recognized by the CSTA club reward to thank them for attending the event. On October 13th, Fit and Fix, the authorized dealer for Bridgestone Tires in Egypt, visited AC as part of its marketing campaign to show their new tires models and exclusive services to AC students. Their campaign aims at introducing AC community to Bridgestone's wide var variety of brand new premium quality tire models that can suit and adapt to different kinds of environment, especially here in Egypt, where tires are subject to misdesigned roads. Two new tire models were presented at AEC. The first one is the Potenza, which is ideal for sports and racing drive style. The second one is the Ecopia, which best suits economical and pro-environment dri driving pace here in Egypt. Fit and Fix also ensured that AC students get a handful of exclusive offers from Bridgestone, including discounts on tires, batteries, and services. In addition, Fit and Fix distributes awareness flyers to AC community in order to illuminate them about tire safety tips and where they can find their branches all across Egypt. That was all for today's news bulletin, but stay tuned for our interview segment coming up next. Now for our interview segment of the show, we're going to talk about personal training. Personal training means that an individual receives his training individually from a private trainer. 
Nowadays, it's becoming a trend in Egypt to enhance people's lives and coach them to become better persons. Let us welcome our inspiring guest who's still a university student and has worked really hard to become a personal trainer faced of ups and downs throughout her journey as a healthy and well-fit personal trainer. Farah Bastawisi, welcome to our show. We're very interested in sharing and in, in you sharing your experience with us. Hi, uh, how are you? How are you? <laughs> uh, so can uh, you start by telling us how did you become, a, how, what came across your mind when you thought of becoming a personal trainer? Okay, uh, personal training uh, weren't my thing. I didn't uh, th thought of being a trainer and work and get money from being a trainer. Uh, it was just I want. I'm always in doubt. I'm, I don't know how uh, to lose uh, a weight. How to uh, uh, if I want to go to the gym, what should I do there? Uh, I'm always in doubt. So I decided uh, to uh, start taking a step and uh, starting education about uh, personal trainer, which is a diploma, I did a diploma, um, including everything that I'm um, questioning. That. So throughout um, doing your diploma, did you face like any challenges like in the studying process or uh, the, 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 the convey of the information itself? Um, Actually, yes, it was hard as you study anatomy, anatomy, physiology, uh, uh, program design techniques and science, uh, you study different uh, individual, uh, individuals, uh, science and how their body uh, interact like for a pregnant woman or um, old man or a young. Yeah, so it differs from an age yes, to another? Yes, yes. So it's too much. Um, you want to, to take uh, a pets and uh, from everything. F it was hard, especially that I'm not a biology student or um, came from a different background. Okay, so um, when did you like? Um, when did you face a really hard uh, case or um, or a specific um, 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 trainer who really like? Ha, like faced a lot of problems with you or like it was hard for you to convey the your message of being healthy and living a, a, and living a healthy lifestyle okay my very first trainer was Ali Masar he's a founder of BFIT here in Egypt mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I struggled with him a lot and he struggled with me for sure for two years and uh, it, uh, he inspired me actually to be a trainer and help people he he were very 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 supportive for me and uh, every day by whatsapp he was supporting me and giving me all the support in my journey uh, then I started with um, someone outside Egypt uh, and he is um, he is also supporting me and is teaching me a lot uh, in my mm. field. So we're inspired actually by uh, yes by Ali Mazhar and uh, Michael Ban, Coach Michael Ban. Okay, yes. so um, throughout like the 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 two months, as you said, of um, of uh, of practicing and, and coaching uh, per, uh, uh, personal As training, a job, uh, big yes. job. Yes, um, was there a case? that you really suffered from or it was um, uh, like hard to fa to uh, to deal with the, with the, with this specific person or someone you co you used to coach okay till now uh, thankfully no but i'm facing a problem with um, what people do outside the gym i can't okay. handle your 1 hour session i can't handle your 23 uh, hours outside the gym so i'm i'm trying to do my best best beside my uh, studying uh, that I'm supporting them through WhatsApp and um, motivating, motivating them, them yes okay. and give them alternatives as I pass through everything they uh, they pass through uh, in their life how friends pressure and family pressures us to do mm -hmm. things other than what's the healthy lifestyle is so many of actually your uh, customers or your um, Clients, your clients yes. actually um, had misconceptions you can say that for sure mm. <laughs> maybe all of them <laughs> they do have misconceptions and it's really in Egypt uh, the misconception misconceptions about uh, sports and nutrition is myriad um, they um, I think social media helps in that uh, people looks like they are also oscillative and they do uh, 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 spread and share um, 
information that's not correct and okay. it's very personalized this is why i'm supporting everyone either to take an education like what i did to know more about how body works and it's so complicated or hire a, a personal trainer yes of course so can you tell us did you have did you face any problem with being a veiled uh, female um for sure yes for sure. um being a veiled okay. for to be an athlete veiled it's mm. a problem people mm. perceive veiled to be at home doing and wearing some specific uh, wear mm -hmm. uh, as a so trainer some places don't allow uh, uh, veiled coaches to work at their place okay thank you farah for sharing your lifestyle tips and tricks and showing people how to cope with being a veiled and conservative uh, personal trainer yet you're enjoying it for sure and not making anything obstruct your way with being a full-time student. Uh, I hope that you um, uh, continue the rest of your journey. Thank and um, you. like you have a, 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 a journey full of success. Uh, so this was all for today's news bulletin. I'm Sara Haney, thank you for watching.